Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome uh, to this uh, uh, webinar with uh, Auto uh, today. Uh, it's uh, great to see so many of you here. Do um, do pop in the uh, do pop in the chat uh, when you uh, you know where you're from uh, and. Uh, and throughout uh, this webinar, do feel free to drop in as, uh, as as many questions or messages or comments as you like in the uh, chat chat area or the or the questions area. And at the end, I will uh, I will obviously pick up and run through the questions. And uh, and uh, I I look forward to you know hearing you know uh, look forward to hearing what you think. So do feel free to uh, uh, contribute. We're just going to wait uh, a couple of minutes to give people a chance to join, and then we will uh, then we'll get underway. We've got a few uh, slides to show you, a little bit of video, a little bit of a demo. So it's lots going on today, and uh, we expect the whole thing to be about half an hour. So uh, you know. Get you free up in half an hour. Hopefully, the uh, an hour, half an hour of your time, well utilized, uh, and you'll uh, see something that's interesting and uh, um, learn something new today. Uh, I can see Barry's typing away. Do feel free to drop into the chat uh, where you're from or uh, what you are up to. So we're just going to give it a couple more minutes for to allow people to join. Thanks, Barry. That's uh, it's really interesting. Barry is a real estate lawyer who's looking at uh, uh, prop tech solutions, and so we're excited to see uh, and uh, for Acuity Law. And so we've got a, a comment from a lawyer uh, coming uh, coming at the end of this presentation. So I'd be interested to, to for you to see for you to see that, Barry. And we have uh, a number of legal clients. Uh, all, all around the world. In fact, we've got legal clients in Sweden and in Germany uh, and in the US and in the UK. So I am going to get things underway uh, and uh, just you know start out. And what I want to do today is talk about you know one of those most basic uh, online applications forms and how you can extend them in a way that can really transform your business uh, and can make a real impact on what your uh, on what your business is doing. And to do that, I want to I want to tell you a uh, a little story um, from uh, of one of our, our customers, not a, not a legal customer, but in fact a uh, health and well being business, and. They, I guess, there's there's an interesting story because they were. Uh, it wasn't an area or a sector that we'd thought that auto would be relevant in, but in fact, I think it's a really great example of, you know, how forms can be used and how you can you can have a real impact on the business. So, um, we uh, this this business is a is a health and well being business. Their business is they help. Uh, people with their diets, not only the kind of calorie intake, the kind of mechanical aspects of it, but also in their attitude to food. So there's a whole psychological aspect to it. And they do that by uh, asking a bunch of questions, gathering a lot of information and producing a, uh, uh, a, a report, uh, a series of recommendations, a series of recipes. It's quite a long document. It's, uh, it's about 80, 90 pages long. Uh, that is tailored to that individual, and then they help that individual through a, a program of one-to-one uh, -one sessions uh, that used to take place in their in their clinics. And they um, uh, it was a time-consuming thing to do, right? Because you've got to get you're asking a lot of questions, you know, a couple of hundred questions, and they're going to take that information and transform it to produce this report. 
and the actual work to produce the report was based on scores and rules and all of those kind of things. And it was pretty, pretty mind numbing for their staff. You know, these people are, you know, highly qualified dietitians. They're almost kind of therapists. And that's where a lot of the value this business is del delivers. It's in that one to one, that kind of counseling relationships with people's relationships with food. So you know they came to us and they were looking for help with reducing the amount of time and effort it took to uh to, to gather this information and to turn it into their to their initial report and so what we built for them or built with them in fact is a series of simple forms and what you see on the screen is you know it's really simple there's a back button there's a next button you type something in and that's really important. It's really important because the people who are using these forms were people who were, you know, may have no technology background at all. They, you know, they may use messaging on the internet, use websites as almost everybody has, do a bit of shopping, but they, they don't need to be encountering a whole complex system. And that's also really important indeed in a in an internal facing, in a corporate environment as well, because we all know if you've ever tried to introduce a new system, you know, training people to use it is a real barrier. So Actually, just making this interface is really simple is very important for us. And it's one of the key principles around our product that uh, that we that we apply at Auto is, is that you should be able to use it with no training whatsoever. It's also really important in this instance because often people were filling in these forms on their personal devices, on their phones. And, uh, and therefore, it has to be an interface that works and scales really well from the computer screen to the phone. So... There's a lot of you know these simple forms, and those were broken up with pages of content. You know, so if you're taking people through a kind of longer process that uh, that this business is, then you need to explain what is going on in that assessment. You need to explain all the stages you're taking them through, and you can do this with text content, with images, with video, in what we call, in, in in simple web pages. And again, these will work on a mobile phone. And on a uh, uh, and on a um, uh, uh, and on a laptop or, or whatever kind of device or a tablet that you may have. Now, as you can see, this is a really really simple interface. It's very very simple indeed. It's very easy to use, and it's automatically generated with an auto. So it's very simple and it's very elegant and it's very easy for the end user to use. But that's what the end user sees, what is actually going on behind the scenes is actually a lot more. There's a lot of complexity. And this is the, the process that in fact their end users are going through, but they don't see a lot of it. They only see the forms and the pages. They don't see all of this stuff going on behind the scenes. Now you probably can't see these very well, what each of those are, but each one of those blobs is what we call an action. Uh, and an action in auto does a job. It might be a calculation. It might be updating a computer system. It might be creating an automated document, or it might be a form or a web page which gets shown to an end user. Um, so what this means is, is that all of that complexity is hidden from the end user, but a lot of work is going on behind the scenes dynamically and automatically without it having to be done by, by this business's staff. So let's just look at you know some of these stages, some of these actions in a little bit more detail so we can see what they're really doing. Well, the first thing it does at the beginning of this workflow is it checks whether they've paid. <laughs> it, uh, uh, it looks at, uh, it looks up in some information that we store in a uh, data table in auto and it says, well, has this person paid their bill? And if, you know, if they have, then we can, um, then they can carry on and use the, the process and carry on through. And if they haven't, then uh, then they get asked to, to, to get in touch and, and get that sorted out. And what that how that's done is, is you can see there's a an icon up there with a magnifying glass. That's what we call a lookup. It looks up that information in the data table and it says, it looks at that email address for that person. It says, have they paid? Yes or no. And then, then we have after it a condition, that branching icon there. And it's that will branch the workflow based on a rule. And you can see that rule just written here on the slide. It says, if paid is yes, go to intro. And really, that's all it does. It's a little piece of logic. 
And you can build these rules up as many of them as you like to be as complex as you like. So they can have multiple if and or nots. So you can build really complex algorithms, but you don't have to type anything to do that. You're just gonna uh, click through a series of buttons to build that. Now that means that this is really accessible and easy to use. Then of course, we've got forms, the forms themselves. And this is uh, this is how you build a form in auto. And I'm gonna show you, you know, this hands-on a little later on. So what this, uh, you can see, this is a yes, no question. And it's where we've got an area where we can ask the question, do you, you know, do you have a healthy diet? And we can, uh, we can put in all sorts of information in there. We can put pictures, we can put videos, we can add lengthy text. This is a nice short question. We also have, uh, we can set whether it's compulsory as you would expect. But importantly, one of the things we're doing here is we're, we're tagging the answer to this question. We're giving it a name. We call those names in auto square brackets. And that means that you can then refer to that answer in all sorts of ways later on in auto. It's a very simple way for you to uh, use that information later on. And again, I'll show you how to do that a little later. So we're gathering data. Once you've got some information, we, we talked earlier about the, um, we talked earlier about the uh, about the this business having to feed the type the information into a spreadsheet and run some calculations. Well, they don't have to do that anymore because Auto runs the calculations for them, and we have a calculator action. It's one of those blobs you saw on that, uh, that long process diagram earlier, and you can see one of them is calculating the BMI, the body mass index. And it's all done. I mean, it's saving 30, 40 seconds of that person's time, but it's saving up typing it into a spreadsheet, getting the output, doing something with it. You can also take pieces of information and transform them into other pieces of information. So in this case, we're taking an answer to the question, you know, what is your activity level? And we're turning it into a number. So if activity level is sedentary to lightly active, which I've certainly been in the last few months, uh, then your score is 12. I probably need to do a bit to change that. So you can transform pieces of information and then you can use those new pieces of information later on in the workflow. So all of the time you are calculating new pieces of information, you're transforming one type of information into another. Finally, they need to produce a document. And here you can see an example of where square brackets are being used in a document. So you can see there's a tag there that says full name and you can see a list of square brackets that's available that have been calculated or created throughout this process by them filling in the forms or some calculation or transformation being run. And all of those can be embedded in a document or an email or a web page or sent to an external system or anything you want to do with them really. It's a very flexible package. Now, in this case, this is producing a big document. It's like 80 pages long. It's probably one of the biggest documents we have amongst our clients. It's rich in graphics and all sorts of presentation. It's a really nicely designed document, something that's really stretched us. But the point is, is it means that they're, they're people who are doing the calculations, change, you know, getting the input, typing into a spreadsheet and typing, taking the stuff from the spreadsheet, including or not including particular paragraphs in the document, depending on that spreadsheet, producing the diet plan, things that used to take them, you know, two or three hours, all gets done by auto. It all gets literally automated. And that has a massive impact on their business. So what has that meant for this business? Well, it's meant a change. In fact, it's opened up a whole new set of opportunities. So before, to get a client set up to get those that information and take it through to the point where they had, you know, the draft of that document ready for that final polish by the dietitian, it was two to three hours per client. And that meant it was an expensive business. Two to three hours of a dietitian's work is a lot of work. And that meant that they could really only offer one-to-one -one programs. Because if they wanted to offer group programs, they had to be able to do it for 15 people. And that means 15 people times two or three hours. That's a working week for somebody just to get all the first documents ready. And that doesn't really work. It didn't work financially. It didn't work economically. The business model didn't work. 
But if they could do that in a matter of minutes, the client enters the information, the first the draft of that report is delivered to them, ready to go with all the calculations and everything in it, and the first draft ready for their final polish, that meant they could get the first report ready for that those clients in 10 minutes. And that meant that they could run a group program. They run it online, they run it in Zoom, where they have uh, you know groups of up to 15 people. And it opened up a whole new world for them. They could deliver this around the world. Their business, uh, it helped them weather the, the current sort of COVID crisis. So obviously their face, their face-to-face -face one-to-ones were much more difficult. Uh, and it opened up a, a, you know, a whole new price point for them as well. So that's been a really transformational kind of uh, event for this business. And what it's been, it's been done by not actually be doing anything massively complex. It's about taking those forms, those forms which we all use every day, you know, every time you buy something from, a, from a, an online store or, or fill in to register for something, you're filling in a form. So you can take those forms and you can automate all sorts of things for them to do. And that simple thing, whether those forms are facing for your customers to use or whether they're for your colleagues to use for internal facing processes, that can have a massive effect. Now, this is all based on, of course, is that you can build this, that you can go and build these, uh, these workflows. These, you, know, you can provide the superpowers for those forms yourself without, without us or any developer or anybody who's really expensive to do it for you. And so, you know, one of the questions we often get is, is really, how easy is that? How, how easy is it to use auto? So I'm going to uh, show you now uh, a piece of video from uh, one of our law firm clients. Uh, this is uh, a trainee solicitor at Burgess Salmon, which is a big UK law firm. And they did an initiative where they uh, we rolled out uh, auto to uh, uh, 40 of their trainees and they gave them a chance to develop applications for automating legal work to make it much simpler to do. Barry, I think this will be of, of interest for you. So let's, let's see what uh, Ebony, who's a trainee solicitor, had to say. Absolutely, the word intuitive definitely rings true. And like I say, I don't have extensive experience in coding at all. And I found after playing around it for about five to 10 minutes, I was able to easily create workflows. So that's it. Five or 10 minutes, Ebony was able to get a grip on auto, start building things. Uh, she actually built uh, uh, a particular legal uh, application that uh, helped guide people if they were subject to um, if they were subject to a compulsory purchase order uh, to, to purchase uh, purchase their property uh, by the local authority and how to guide them through that process. So it was quite a sophisticated. Uh, a sophisticated kind of decision tree with lots of information going in and lots of information being processed through it. And she was able to do that with really pretty much zero training. You know, ten, you heard that, 10 minutes, she's got a grip on it because it's very, very simple and easy to do. Absolutely. Yep. Let's move that one on. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and answer any of your questions. So please do drop them into the uh, questions tab. And um, what I would uh, also, or what I'm also going to do is show you live. You know, take my, take my, you know, take the bull by the horns and show you live how to build something in auto. So I'm just going to swap over my uh, screen here. And switch this over to a uh, new screen share. Just give me one second, please. And what you can see uh, here is um, 
what you can see here is is how auto is built so this here is what we call our uh, workflow editor and you can see down here we have a palette of these different blobs and i've started building something so here we have our start page this is where we welcome people to our uh, workflow we've set in the data policy and uh, as we build, it is automatically building the user interface for us. We can just preview that here. My internet connection will hold up here. You can see, and there's my data policy that I've built. So how do you build an auto? It's really very simple. You take the actions you want in this case, and then you link them up in the order you want to ask, ask them in. So after my start page, we want to ask some questions. And I've set up a few of these questions in advance. You can see I'm asking a text question of what is your name, a multiple choice question. You know, how did I do? You know, I'm going to invite you guys to uh, give me a score here uh, and uh, and see um, and see how my webinar did. But I also want to ask you uh, another question. So let's set up another question. So here I can add uh, from one of the 15 different types of question that we have. I'm going to add a rating question, and we're going to go, uh, how easy is it to build a form in Blender? And we're going to make this compulsory question, and we're going to go and call this, we're going to give it a tag. We're going to give it that tag we talked about. We're going to call it easy to build. Now, this is a ratings question, so we want to choose what our highest and, highest and lowest rating is. So we're going to go for the uh, 1 to 10. We're going to go lowest rating. We're going to put really difficult. Highest rating, very easy. So we can, you can see we've got all sorts of uh, custom options that we can add to a form. It's a really very powerful, uh, very powerful package. And there we've now added a question. Now, the next thing we might want to do is we might want to uh, branch our workflow. Uh, we want to um, be able to choose a particular direction uh, for the workflow to go on, depending on that information. So I'm just going to build one of those conditions you saw earlier so you can see how it is to do. So let's build it based on our score. And we know that our score is called easy to build. So if easy to build, and it knows that it's a number, so it's going to give us a score. So we're going to get more than seven. And then go to, wow, this is easy. You can see I didn't need to type anything. It knows what logic is available to me. Now, if it's not easy, if I haven't done well, it's not, I'm not getting an eight, nine, or 10, it's gonna send me an email, right? So, uh, so now you can see we've asked a form, we've asked some questions, we've branched a workflow, and I just wanna show you how to uh, use that information that we gathered earlier on. So we asked the name. So we might want to personalize this page a little. And here you can see we asked, what's your name? We just type that opening square bracket. We can put in to say, I to see you. You think, what do you think? We did well. Thanks for a score of. Oh, that's the wrong webinar rating. That's the wrong one. So you can see how easy it is to change. Somebody, uh, I think somebody was asking me how easy it is to change something in your form or anywhere within Auto. So once you've built it and published it, you have a, an editable version. You can come back to that editable version, change it republish it and your new version will automatically become available. So you can change it in literally seconds. So we're gonna give it that score there. So there you go, we have just very simply and easily built a workflow. Now I'm gonna go and uh, just 
add another thing here. I'm going to rename this. Difficult to type and do a webinar at the same time. Yeah. So again, we're just, we're doing these things very, very simply and easily. So here we're configuring an email. You guys know how to do this because you send emails every day, right? Uh, and that's what we try to make it, uh, uh, how easy we try to make it in auto. We try to make it uh, so it is very, very simple to use. So there we've built a workflow. Once we've done that, we publish it. This one's being published registration required. We publish it, and here we've got a, uh, a URL. And I'm just gonna drop that in the chat and that's the uh, URL for this workflow. You can go to it, you can register, you can have a go at the workflow. And now I'm just gonna do that. Uh, I'm going to uh, pop up here. And I happen to have all my information already ready. So I'm registered. Ian. I think I think I did pretty good, pretty good. So I'm going to give myself a pretty good score, and I'm going to give myself a uh, uh, a nine for this because I I think it's super easy to do. And there you go, that very simple thing. Now that's a really really simple application. But obviously, you can do things that are very very complex that are directly relevant to your business and what you want to do. So if you're in real estate law or in health or well-being or in uh, any kind of business where you want to get customer feedback or run automated workflows for your colleagues, then you can build these things very, very simply and easily. And you can you can be the person who's doing it. You don't need to be dependent on technology team or IT or some other complex thing. You see that we built that, we published it and we took literally a few minutes to do it. So uh, I don't know if anybody's got any uh, questions. Let me just see. I can see some more uh, coming in. Let's. Uh, uh, how easy is it to access or extract data from these automated forms? Uh, so that's very, very easy indeed. So there's a couple of different ways you can do that. Now you can see here, now we've published this. We've got a tab up here that says data. So you can see all the progress that we've gone through it. And you can access all of the data for this workflow is, is here, what branch they took down, all the information. And you can download it as an Excel or a CSV. You could also uh, have it automatically sent uh, to a, uh, another platform. So I can see Leanne's asking, what, what does Auto integrate with? So today we have integrations to uh, Google, uh, Dropbox, um, Microsoft, um, we have a Microsoft Dynamics integration to CRMs. Or we have integrations you can apply to uh, HubSpot, for example, uh, Slack, uh, Stripe, if you want to take payments through the workflow. So there's a whole range of integrations. And we have a, a whole area of our platform called our API manager. And that, uh, uh, that uh, enables people to um, build, in fact, custom integrations to all sorts of things. Now, one of the things we'd like to do is if you think auto might be of interest to you today, then uh, do drop me an email. Drop me an email at ian, I-A-N dot gosling at auto dot I-O. I'm going to drop that uh, email in the chat. And uh, here. And we would be delighted to give you a free trial. And also, we will uh, we'll commit to help you build your first workflow. And we'll do that uh, absolutely free of charge during that free trial. We want to help you build that first workflow, get the value, uh, get the value you need for it, because we're, we're that confident in auto and what it can do that we're sure that you will have the opportunity to, uh, to benefit from it. 
so do drop me an email, ian.gosling at auto.io. Um, if anybody ha does anybody have any other questions, then it'd be great to drop them into the chat now, and I'm happy to um, to answer them. Uh, if not, I'm conscious we've we've kind of hit our time. It's 11:30. I hope that uh, uh, that's been a really interesting half an hour from you. Thank you for uh, staying and listening to me. And uh, do you know? Do get in touch with us. We'd be delighted to hear what you're trying to do and to see if we're a good fit to help you. Great. Thanks very much, everybody. I don't think we've got any more questions coming in. So I am uh, going to, oh, we've got another one coming in for the chat. Uh, yes, Barry, it certainly is powerful. We're, and we, you know, we'd be great to chat to you to hear what you're trying to do in, in, in real estate. And, uh, you know, in particular, you're probably going to be interested in document automation. And I haven't had a chance to show you that today, but we do have quite a powerful uh, document automation package as well. Great. Thank you very much indeed for your time. And uh, do uh, do drop me an email and I look forward to speaking to you all soon. Thank you. Bye bye.